Hey, what's up? Lightboat Joe here. Today we are going to discuss Saw. <laughs> oh my God, I've seen I've seen far too many horror films in the last couple of reviews. We're going to talk about Scream Four. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, this came out 2011. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I'm actually crying. All right, so came out 2011. Directed by Wes Craven. First and foremost, um, I'm COVID negative. I'm I'm so happy that my my COVID nineteen test came back negative. I was very worried, um, but now we can laugh about all these good, good horror films that we've discussed about. Okay, so Screen Four came out in 2011. It takes place ten years after Saw three. I did it again. Scream, Scream three. Oh man, I'm sorry. It takes place. Scream 4 came out in 2011. And it takes place 10 years after Scream 3. Okay. Which came out in 20, in 2000, but obviously there was 11 years in between the two. Okay. And then when Scream 4, no, this is Scream 4. When Scream 5 comes out, um, it's going to be 2022. So it's 11 years after Scream 4. Right? So Scream 5 is coming out 2022, 11 years after Scream 4. Scream 4 was 11 years after Scream 3. Okay, so there we, we have consistency going on. All right. Again, I don't like the MTV show, the the, the Scream TV series. I, I think it's just weird. Um, so I don't pretend that that's a thing. Okay, so Sydney Prescott is a survivor, and she writes a book, and she's going on a book tour. So she stops in Woodsboro to do a reading you know see your old friends as in gail and dewey and the killings start to happen again so uh there's a character jill played by emma roberts who uh is sydney's much younger cousin her mom and sydney's mom were sisters and so that's really it that's the, that's the backstory we get for that so sydney has to stay with you know jill and kate her aunt for a little bit because the killer starts to then kill some of Jill's friends, uh, was threatening Jill on the phone, you know, with the ghost face voice, and, uh, you know, killings. So, Gail and Dewey have been married now for 10 years. She's no longer a reporter, she's just trying to write a book. Um, Dewey is now the chief of police, and there's a, uh, he has a new deputy, um, Hicks. Deputy Hicks is awesome, she's gonna be reprising a role in, um, in Scream 5, so that's gonna be pretty cool. So, you know, they're trying to figure out who's the next, who's the new ghost killer, and why are they back? So, Gail, one of my favorite scenes in the Scream franchise, to be completely honest, is in this movie. It's when there's the stab like, seven-movie marathon going on at the old barn, and Gail is, like, putting these cameras all over the place because they go over the different rules of, like, the newest remake kind of a thing. It's a new decade, so it's new rules. Also, Adam Brody and Anthony Anderson being cop, buddy cops in this, hysterical. Wonderful death scenes, mind you, but hysterical. But Adam literally says, new decade, new rules. So I just think it's really fun that the, the cinema club it goes over all the rules of, you know, what is this type of horror movie? Going back to the original plot, but different characters, stuff like that. Um, so the cinema club hosts from, from Woodsboro High hosts the Stabathon. Gail is putting cameras around to, you know, make sure the kids are all right. Uh, but then the ghost face killer is the one who's actually filming all the murders because it's a new new decade, new rules. So he's obviously going to be the one making the movie, not the movie being made of him. <gasps> Meta! I love that reference. The self-revelation, you know, of the art. The art becomes the art. The art becomes the life. So, uh, Gail gets dead in the shoulder and then Dewey goes on another hunt and then there's this massive stabbing fight going on at this friend Kirby's house, played by Hayden Panettiere. Amazing, amazing woman that she is. Um, so then Emma Roberts is friends with Hayden Panettiere's character. Emma's character of uh, Jill was dating, has an ex-boyfriend named Trevor, who happens to be at this house now as well. Um, one of the film guys, Charlie, is there, and then one of his buddies, uh, Robbie, is there as well. So it's, it's, it's them. Robbie winds up getting killed by Ghostface. Trevor gets wind up getting tied and thrown in a closet. In Pierre's character, uh, winds, Kirby, winds up getting stabbed by Charlie, who reveals himself as a ghost face killer. Um, and then he, he's, uh, 
is explaining, you know, why he wants to make this new movie and that it's it's reality, it's not, you know, fiction, because it's real. And then it turns out Jill was the other ghost face killer the entire time, but she then stabs uh, Sydney, who happens to try to save Jill, realizing she's saving the villain. And then uh, Jill's going on about how she wants to be the hero, because growing up in the family, it's incessant that, you know, Sydney's so special, and Sydney this, and Sydney that, and, you know, it's not fair. Literally the motive, but whatever. So Jill says this thing of, uh, you know, it's so hard to get fans, you know, without being a survivor, as Sydney would know. So she plans the whole thing that it's, she's blaming the ex-boyfriend Trevor. So she like takes his dead hand and like makes a scratch on her face and like has his hand rip out hair from her and like has his knife stab her and like, it's a whole big thing. So Dewey and Hicks come, take them to the hospital, turns out. And he did survive, but Jill does not want that to happen. So she plays dumb, slips by saying, oh, Gail and I can write a book together because we have matching, you know, wounds because they both got stabbed in the shoulder, even though Jill stabbed herself in the shoulder, but made it look like Trevor did it. So Jill then goes to Sydney's room to try to kill her. Dewey tells Gail about the shoulder thing, and Gail's like, wait, how did she know that I also had been stabbed in the shoulder? And then Dewey's like, God, ah, I'm so dumb, you know. Damn it. So then he goes running to Sydney's room, calls for backup. There's a massive shootout. Jill gets shot after, you know, beating the crap out of Sydney. But um, before Jill gets shot, she is electrocuted by paddles. Clear. That was a cool scene with Gail and Sydney working together. Um, and then she gets shot in the stomach. So, yeah. I really liked it. I really liked the fourth. I really liked the third. But I really liked the fourth. So... Let's revisit. The first scream, the murderers were Billy and Stu. The second scream, the murderers were Billy's mom and the college friend, Mickey. The third scream, the murderer was Roman, the half-brother of Sydney. Right? There was nobody else? No. No. And then the fourth scream... The murderers were Jill and Charlie. So, who's going to be the murderers in the fifth scream? I was about to say Saw again. Deadly of me. But yeah, I'm very I'm very curious. And I'm telling you, I cannot wait to see Jenny Ortega, Dylan Minet, and Mason Gooden um, do their thing and play these new teenagers at Woodsboro High. And it's just going to be so incredible. And I'm so excited. I really want, for the, for my sanity, just because I know he can do it, I want Dylan Minet to be the killer. I don't know why, like backstory-wise, but I want him as an actor to be the killer because he plays such an incredible, dramatic, and, and scary person. You know, I, I'm referencing his character in 13 Reasons Why. It's just, he just did just this this anxiety twists and turns and talking to himself and psychotic breaks galore and oh loved it but to be fair jenna ortega could be a pretty badass you know murderer and mason gooding could be a pretty badass murderer too they all could be why don't we have three why don't we have three murderers this time why, do, why does it always have to be one or two let's let's do three let's throw a twist in this so we'll see they're currently filming it i'm very excited i'm following everybody's stories it's very entertaining david arquette just had a painting class for all the kids it's Oh, I love it. But, uh, yeah. So, thus concludes our Halloween spooky season marathon of things. I believe it's past Halloween by the time I'm actually posting this specific review. I'm doing this review on October 15th. I don't know when I'm posting this, but I'm pretty sure Halloween has passed by the time I have posted this. But, uh, we'll see. Is it election day? Am I posting this on election day? Go vote vote if it's election day go vote if it's not election day i hope you voted like before election day or if this is after election day i hope you voted i don't know i don't know what day this is that i'm actually posting it on the interwebs i'm rambling that was a good laugh i'm i didn't i didn't intend any of that so that was that was a good wrap up i i give myself a round of applause for keeping up with these uh spooky season horror reviews i'm very i'm very happy we did this thank you all for joining me i don't know what the next review is going to be but we'll, we'll see i gotta watch blind matter at some point the haunting of blind matter but uh 
It's not on my immediate list. We'll see. All right. Mahalo.